How many of you guys know this morning that Satan is a liar? Scripture says that he is the father of all lies. That means the truth is not in him. And you know, if there's one thing he wants you to think or believe this morning, it's that you're not going to make it. And the reality is he wants you to think that because there's one really important thing he doesn't want you to know. And that is who you are in Christ and what you have because of Christ. So this last month, we've been in the series, Defending Your Faith. And today is the finale. Today is part three, but we're really excited because one of our life group leaders today is going to be wrapping up this series. So put your hands together. Give it up for Miss Jessie Lucas. She's going to be bringing the word today. Come on, girl, bring it. Good morning, Mountain Movers family. I'm happy to be here this morning and to give God glory. So we have been in this, in this series of defending your faith, and today we're going to be talking about walking in your authority that God has given you. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jesse Lucas. If we haven't met before, I'm married to Colton Lucas. We've been married for almost 11 years next month, and we've got two wild little man cubs who are just the joy of our house. And God has blessed us so much. We have been here at Mount Movers for a little bit over six years. And God has just given us so much victory that I want to share it with you today. So we're going to look at the definition of authority. The definition of authority is the power or right to give orders, make decisions, and enforce obedience. And we learn all throughout the Bible that the one who has all authority is Jesus. There's no ruler, no power on heaven or on earth that has victory over him. He has authority over all things. Okay, so I want to tell you a little bit in Ephesians chapter 1. At the end of the chapter, Paul prays for the people of Ephesus. And he's praying that they understand the greatness of God's power that is available to them who believe. And that power is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And that the church is his body and that we become full and complete in him by himself filling us with himself. And so we can know that God's power is for us, that he loves us, and he wants us to walk in it. So I want to tell you a little story about my mom. My mom is the sweetest lady on the planet. She's here today and she's probably like, what are you saying about me? (laughs) Some people say we look alike, but I don't know if I really see that. (laughs) So my mom is the sweetest lady on the planet. She has all the fruits of the spirit. You can check every single box off. There's not a mean bone in her body. And growing up, my brother and sister and I all played sports. We were very competitive. I played basketball and softball. And it was about my junior, senior year. And I'm playing in a district game. And this game was intense and the crowd, just the atmosphere was loud. And you know, my mom is up in the stand, she's just going right along with the cheerleaders, like go big black. Like there's not a, nothing aggressive about her. She's not a Misty Hilton. She, <laughs> love you Misty. She is just not an aggressive person. And so I get fouled by another girl on the other team. She was number 10. And so whenever she fouled me, she was just the player who was dirty. She trash talked the whole game. She just tried to get away with every foul possible. So when she fouled me, she goes over to the ref and she starts talking to the ref. And she's like, did you not see her do that? She charged at me. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. So I'm walking to the free throw line and my mom recognized somebody was making an accusation about her daughter. And so I go to the free throw line and the crowd starts to get a little bit quiet. And then all of a sudden I hear this from the stands. Shut up, number 10. (laughs) Mom, you've never told anybody to shut up in your life. And now is the time that you decide to tell somebody in front of all these people. I was embarrassed. She was embarrassed. Mom, Holy Spirit told me to tell this story so you can't be that mad at me. (laughs) But ultimately, she recognized an accuser. And in our own life, we have to recognize who the accuser is today. And his name is Satan, and he's after you. He wants to lie to you. He wants to tell you just accusations. He wants to condemn you. And that is not who we are in Christ. So I'm going to give you three steps to walking in your authority, and they go hand in hand with renewing your mind. Number one is you must know who you are. 
I'm going to bring it back a couple weeks ago whenever Brad was talking about The Lion King. Greatest animated movie of all time, right? Okay, so we have Simba, we have Scar, and Scar sees everything in Simba, who he's called to be. He's going to be the king of the animal kingdom, and Scar wants to take him out before he grows enough to know who he is, right? So he doesn't take him out, but Simba goes to the wilderness. He has an identity crisis. He doesn't know who he is, but we all know the end of the story. He goes and defeats Scar, right? And so something had to happen to change Simba's mind. We see Rafiki come on the scene. He's got his whacking stick. He's bopping Simba on the head. And he says, I know who you are. You're Mufasa's boy. And so they, he follows Rafiki into the wilderness and into the thorns and the jungle. And they come up to this quiet scene. And Simba looks down and he sees his reflection. And then he looks again and he sees Mufasa. And Rafiki says, he lives in you. And then Mufasa comes up in the sky and Mufasa says, remember who you are. Remember who you are. And I think that God is telling his church today to remember who you are. Remember who you are. I call you mine. You are loved. You are cherished. You are adored. There is nothing that can separate my love for you. And I am for you. And you have the victory through me. Right? So we have to know who we are in Christ. Here's just a list of things who he says we are, and you can, get, you can die further in your word. But you are his child. If you've received Christ in your heart, he calls you his. If you've had an abusive father, or maybe you haven't had a father, I know a heavenly father who is proud to say, you are mine, and I'm never letting you go. You are loved. Some of us just need to be washed in that word today that we are loved. You are a new creation. All the old life is gone. You're not a product of your mistakes. You're not a victim to your circumstance. You're a new creation. You are a citizen of heaven. You are chosen for such a time as this. By the way, God created you on purpose for now. You are God's workmanship. He knit you together in your mother's womb. He gave you qualities and gifts and talents that nobody else has. You're special and unique. You are one with Christ. He lives in you. You are set free by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are redeemed and you are not condemned. There's no condemnation for you in Christ. So we must know who we are. If you're hearing lies coming into your head that says you're not worthy, you're not good enough, you're not pretty, you're not this, you're not that, you say, no, God says I am his workmanship. God says that I have the victory through Christ. God says that I am loved. God calls me his own. Number two, we must know God's promises. Brad and Missy preach all the time that we have to be in our word. Our word is our true reality. And so if we're in our word, we can renew our mind based off of what our circumstance is saying and say, no, I'm going to go back to God's word and this is what he says. He's going to supernaturally store that word in your heart. And so whenever you are in your word, he's doing that, he's putting that in your heart. And so before the battle comes, you can say, no, Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. So although this circumstance is not fun right now, I know he's working all things together for my good. So we can go back to God's word every day. Find your rhema word, find where God is speaking to you, find where his presence is at. And so these are just a few promises that he gives his children. You have the victory through Christ Jesus. You have not lost. He's already won it for you. You can stand on that. You can do all things through Christ. Can't tell you how many times the enemy came at me this week and said, you can't do that. No, I can do all things through Christ Jesus because that's what he says. You already have every spiritual blessing. You are not of lack. You have wisdom. You're not stupid. You are no longer a slave to sin. Well, I still struggle with the alcohol. I still struggle with this sin. And I just don't know what to do. Well, God says that you're no longer a slave to sin. And God says that he gives you a way out of every single temptation. And so you stand on that word and watch what he will do. 
you have peace. God supplies all my needs. I'm talking to the tithers. If you've been faithful to the tithe in context, this says that God will supply all of your needs so you can stand on that promise. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Isn't that nice? That's good. All right, moving on to number three. You must believe it and declare it. We're gonna go in to a verse where we're at James 1, six through eight. And it says, when you ask, you should not doubt, you must believe. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Ouch. That one hurts a little bit. We come in here on Sunday. We're on the mountaintop. We're feeling God's presence. We're feeling good. And then Monday and Tuesday roll back around and our minds are back in the gutter. Life hits. But can I tell you that you can access God's presence wherever you are that you can get in your word wherever you are. And God says that he's given you hinds feet to climb mountains and that you go up that mountain every single day. We have to take our thoughts captive. Who takes our thoughts captive? We do. We have the authority over our own mind. You are the prison ward to your thoughts. If you've got a thought that's coming in that's not of God or that says you suck or whatever, <laughs> sorry, said suck. You, you are the prison ward to your thoughts. So you say, nope, you go back to your prison cell today. I'm not putting up with you. Go back. God's word says this. Okay. And finally, you have to take your authority up whenever you decide to stand up, step out, and speak out. I had a dream one night. This was a couple of years back, and the Lord was showing me how to fight. And in this dream, me and my husband went into this room, and there was another man in the room. I didn't know who he was. And then in the corner of the room, I saw this pig. It was matte black. It was probably four feet tall. It had horns sticking out from its head, spikes all around its body. Clearly, it was demonic. And so the man in the room said to just me, and like Brad and Missy said a couple weeks ago, Simon, Simon, I've came to sift you like wheat. Jesse, Jesse, he's came to sift me like wheat. And that's for all of us. The assignment was against me in my dream. And so he said to me, if it likes you, then it won't kill you. But if it doesn't like you, then it's going to kill you. So I go on to have conversation with my husband and this thing just comes to life all of a sudden. It's snarling at me, it's growling at me, it's kicking its hooves back, and it's about to charge me. And so I start running from room to room to room in this stream, and I can't catch a break. And I'm looking around, I'm like, where's my husband? He's got the gun, he knows how to use a gun. Like, shoot the thing, right? But God told me in my dream, you have to fight this battle. And so whenever I'm going around room to room, I'm looking for an opportunity to take. So I see this bench, I climb up on the bench, and then it jumps up at me. I grab it by its back legs, swing it over my head, and pound it to the floor and crush its head. And you know, we can be here in this wonderful community with God's people who are here to stir us on in our faith. We've got amazing life group leaders who pray for us and pastors who cover us. And it's such a beautiful thing. But ultimately, you are called to fight. You alone are called to take action. So you've got to take up your responsibility and walk in authority over the enemy. And the way that we do this is by using our mouth. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You're either bringing hell into your atmosphere or you're bringing heaven by what you say. And if you're complaining or grumbling and if you're agreeing with the lies of the enemy and you're speaking that out of your mouth, it's not doing you any good. But if you're saying, no, my children will come to know the Lord because your word says that none should perish in Jesus' name. Okay. And the other way that we can take action with our mouth 
is by taking the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. In Ephesians 6, he gives us an armor, and we know that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but we're fighting against rulers of darkness and spirits of darkness. And he's given us shoes of peace, a belt of truth. He's given us our breastplate of righteousness, our shield of faith, and our helmet of salvation. And we've got one thing to fight back the enemy with. And it's our sword. It's a sword of the spirit that cuts the enemy's head off. And I encourage you today to take out your sword. Start finding your rhema word where God is speaking to you and declare it in Jesus' name. And watch what God will do. And... Jesus told his disciples to pray like this. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if your situation is not what it looks like in heaven, you just start speaking from a heavenly perspective. You are seated in heavenly places. God has given you vision to see. If you're walking into your workplace and it's toxic, you say, peace here now in Jesus' name. There's going to be peace here now in Jesus' name. And I couldn't tell you all of this with confidence without God bringing me through some things myself. About five years ago, I had an encounter that probably changed my, the course of my life with, the walk, with my walk in the Lord. And this night, I went to sleep, and I could just feel a dark presence in our home. I don't know how else to explain it. I could just say that it felt dark. And so I went to sleep. And then I had a dream that my three-month-old was possessed. And three months postpartum, I was tired, I was weak, I was vulnerable mentally and physically, and the enemy will come at you when you're all of those things. He does not care if you're tired or weak. He's going to hit you where it hurts, and that's what he did for me. And so I had this dream, I wake up, and fear is just coming on me. And then I try to go back to sleep, and our dogs start going from one end of the house to the other. And it looked like they were chasing something. But me and my husband got up, and we couldn't see anything. So I go back to sleep, and then I just felt like if I opened my eyes, I would see this horrible face in front of me. And I was so scared to even open my eyes. And so go back to sleep, dogs again, back and forth in the house. And then I thought, I need to go check on Cain. So I walk in his room, he was laying in his crib, and he had a pillow over his face. The pillow wasn't there whenever I tucked him in that night. But the Lord had exposed all of that because the enemy was able to come in through a little tiny door or a little tiny sliver through the crack. And it was because of sin that we had allowed that allowed the enemy to come into our home. This could look like something so simple that you're doing that you don't even know you're allowing the enemy to come in. This could look like scary movies and horror films. You're just inviting fear and anxiety into your home. This could be pornography. Big problem, guys. This could be having a critical spirit. This could be just meditating on fear. This could be alcohol. All of these things, you're just letting the enemy come right on in. And if he hasn't exposed himself, I pray that he does. And I pray that you start making steps into your calling because the only time that, the, that God allowed all of that to happen was out of his grace and his mercy for us to not leave us in the bondage of sin that we were in. But I went through a time where I was just living in fear. I didn't want to go in my house. I thought I was the only one going through what I was going through. I listened to the enemy and he would tell me things like, God's not really good. If God was with you, how did all that happen? But you know what I did? I had to choose. Just like that video said, you have a choice. And I had to choose to fight. And what I did, I was on my knees every morning. I was in my word every day, and I still am. And I am praising my, with my worship songs. And can I testify that whenever we cry out to Jesus, that he answers and that he is faithful and that he wants to meet you in the middle of your mess and he loves you that much? And I even went through sleep paralysis. That's where your whole body, your your mind is awake whenever you're sleeping and you can't wake your body up. That's just not some coincidence. That's a spirit of fear over you. And the enemy is 
He is threatened by you. If you're having that, you need to rebuke it in Jesus' name. So the enemy will continue to harass you and torment you and try to oppress you until you say enough is enough. There was one night a couple months ago, and I was, actually it was evening time, and I saw my anointing oil in the windowsill. And that, that oil for me just represents the Holy Spirit. And time to time, I'll take it above my doorpost and around my windows, and I'm just covering my home with the blood of Jesus. It's just a representation. There's nothing magical about it. And so the Holy Spirit said to me, you need to anoint your home tonight. And I thought, meh. We haven't been sinning. Like, everything's fine. And it was just pure laziness on my part that I didn't do it. And so I go to bed that night. And in the middle of the night, my son wakes up from an earache. And he's screaming for 30 minutes. That's never happened before. He's never even had an earache. And I'm like, eh, coincidence. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. So I still don't take up my authority. And so then I go back to sleep. And I had a dream that... um, had a dream, all the cows got out, and they're all over our yard, went back to sleep, and I could just feel fear coming in, I'm feeling the spirit of darkness, and I'm still lazy enough not to do anything about it, so then I had another dream that our house was robbed, and then I wake up, and I saw this dark figure standing on the edge of our bed, looked like a man, and I couldn't see his face, but it was so real, and I was thinking, how am I going to get my gun before he kills me? So half awake, half asleep, I'm like, this isn't real. I'm going to go back to sleep. Well, then I felt an impression step on my bed. And at that point, I had had enough. I got up, I put my feet on the floor, and I walked to the door, and I said, get out of my house, you spirit of fear or darkness or whatever you are in the name of Jesus. And as I was shutting the door, the boys had some toys outside. Nothing else was around him, and I was shutting the door, and one of the toys said, come on now, let's get going. And that might seem scary to some people, but I went to bed with so much joy, and I laughed myself asleep, and I learned a lesson to be obedient whenever you hear that still, small voice telling you to do something. And God wants to cover you with his protection, and the only way he can do that is if we're obedient and we're abiding in him. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to turn to Luke 10, 19. And it says, look, I have given you authority over all the enemy. You can tread on snakes and scorpions and nothing will injure you. God is telling, Jesus is telling this to his disciples. If you want the authority in your life, you need to know him. And Revelation 12, 11 says that we have overcame the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So what do you do? You plead the blood. The blood is sufficient. Say, I plead the blood over my marriage. I plead the blood over my home. I plead the blood over my children. I plead the blood over my workplace. I plead the blood over my church. I plead the blood over the city. I plead the blood over my nation. And watch what God will do. And your testimony is your superpower. Everybody's got a testimony. I don't care who you are. You can say, oh, God hasn't really done anything for me. Are you alive today? He's done something for you. You can give him glory with your testimony, and every time you're making the enemy mad and madder and madder. I had a dream. I want to share one more thing with you guys. I had a dream a couple months ago, and in this dream, I got bit by a snake. And just like that word says, snakes in the spiritual realm, they're demons and they're spirits of darkness. So I got bit by the snake, I'm rushed to the hospital, I'm headed to the ER, and I'm sitting there in the ER and nobody is helping me. I'm saying, somebody please help me, I need medicine, I got bit by a snake, somebody please help me, I'm getting ready to pass out. And I'm saying, where's the anti-venom? Somebody bring me the anti-venom. And nobody is helping me. And I passed out in my dream and I woke up And God said, look up what anti-venom is. So naturally I pull out my phone and I look at Google and I said, what are the ingredients to anti-venom? You know what it is? It's sheep's blood. It's the blood of a lamb. It's the blood of a lamb 
that covers us and washes us clean and sets us free. And when he went to the cross, he poured out every single drop and it was for me and it was for you. That's how much he loves you. So I just wanna wrap this up today. I wish, I would like for you to just close your eyes and bow your heads. Nobody's looking around. If you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart, today is the day. Today is the day that you can have victory. Today is the day that he is calling you his. He loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. He's ready to meet you in the middle of your mess. And all you have to do is cry out to him. If your heart is pounding right now, that's just him knocking on the door of your heart and saying, let me in. So if you're here today and you would like to invite Jesus into your heart, would you please raise your hand so we can pray with you? Yes, I see your hand in the back. Thank you, Jesus. I see both of your hands in the back. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else today? Thank you, Lord. All right, let's just bow our heads and we'll pray this prayer together. Jesus, thank you for the blood that covers me and washes me. And I pray that you forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and change me forever. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray also over you who know that you're called to step up into the fight. You know you have this authority down deep inside of you and you're ready to start taking action. If that's you today, if you're tired of the enemy harassing you and oppressing you and you want to start taking authority, please raise your hand. And if anybody in here is also feels called that you're an intercessor and you're ready to walk in that authority that he's given you, yes, hands are raised all over the place. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just gonna pray over you a boldness and courage and faith today. Lord, I just pray for every single hand raised right now, Lord. It is an act in itself in faith. And Lord, I thank you that they are called for such a time as this. I thank you, Lord, that you are giving them boldness, you are giving them courage, and you are increasing their faith this morning. And I just speak victory over their life in any situation that they're in. And I pray, Lord, that we bind the spirit of fear that might be upon them, that might be making them feel scared. And we tell that spirit to go in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for your power and your grace and your mercy that covers everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen.